as Rangers GM Chris Young joins us now in the broadcast booth here on your home of the Rangers, 105.3 The Fan. And a good afternoon, sir. Nice to see you. How the heck are you? I'm good. Good. Right Thanks on. for having me. Better now that we uh, we wrapped up a win here. So good day. Yeah, yeah this yeah. was fun. A, a lot of good things going on with the ball team. What's it like after such a big offseason seeing all this now on, on the field? What, what's your feelings like? Well, it's fun. I mean, the offseason was a lot of fun because we were able to, to add to our team. Um, I think it was a great offseason for our fans, uh, really addressed our pitching. Uh, but it's not real until you get into camp and you get around the guys and you're able to sort of see everybody come together, especially with new leadership in the dugout with Boach and Mike Maddox and Will Venable and the coaching staff and then just getting these guys around each other. And I think that we've um, I've been excited to see that. I know as a former player what it's like to be around your teammates and it just it accelerates that um, that learning curve early in the season where you get used to each other. The chemistry kind of comes together. So it's been fun watching that in person this spring and we've got a good group. How do you transition from a team that was developing and building to a team now with expectations? Is there a, a mindset shift that some of the young guys need to go through? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I think that um, we can talk about it a lot. I think ultimately it's going out there and doing it. I think a lot of that has to do with the right veterans around them. I think it has to do with expectations of the coaching staff. You know, the one thing that we have done the last couple of years, despite losing, is we set an expectation in terms of what winning looks like, it, what it looks like to play the game hard, what it looks like to really – um, to show up every day prepared and those types of things. And while it didn't manifest necessarily in the win-loss column, um, I think it has prepared these guys for, for this season where we do have expectations to win. And these guys know uh, they, we're not teaching them how to prepare. We're not teaching them how to come to the field every day with a mindset of, um, of you know, hoping to win. It's we, we expect to win. That's great. So uh, speaking of that, Marcus Simeon today, three for three. What, what, what do we put into that? Does that mean he's dialed in to start, or is it just spring training hacks at the plate? What do well, we say? Well, you know, I always say uh, when you don't do well in spring training, you brush it off to, well, it's just spring training, but nobody wants to, to not do well. So I, I think it's always great when the players do well in spring. I know for me it gave me more confidence the years I had better spring trainings. But I think ultimately for Marcus, um, whether he is a, a good – spring statistically or not um i think he had a tremendous off season just being in the metroplex he was a leader in the stadium every day in our workouts we had a bunch of guys working out following his lead he was there every day he's had an unbelievable off season i think he's primed for a great year and certainly today seeing the three for three and the way he played um i think it's a sign of things to come Eric and I got to sit in with Bruce Bochy in, in his media session earlier today and talk about commanding a room. I mean, I'm just sitting there, and I don't want to disappoint Bochy and just ask a bad question. I mean, what is the difference that you've noticed in just the short time that he's been here? I mean, clearly you got to play with him. Yeah. You had a relationship with Bruce Bochy. He was your guy. But already it seems like guys just want to run through a wall for him. Yeah, Boach is just special. Uh, I think the best way to describe it is he has a unique ability to connect um, on an individual level, but also stand in front of the team and create an expectation for everybody. And um, it's really, it's an art um, to be able to do that. And uh, I just can't explain how much I've enjoyed watching him on a daily basis, watching him command a room, uh, the way the staff has responded to him on a daily basis. And the players seem to enjoy him as well. I, I don't think you can find anybody in the game who has a negative thing to say about him. Uh, but he's competitive too. I mean, it's he's a he's a super nice guy. He's approachable. He's likable. He's humble as can be. But he's competitive. He wants to win. And when we don't win, you know, early in the the first two spring trainings, spring, uh, spring training is we didn't win, and and Boach is pissed off after the game. I yeah. mean, which is a great sign. So. I love him. I'm so happy he's here. I think it's great for our, our players. Um, certainly, as a front office, I'm thrilled. But I can't wait for our fans to get to know him. I think that they are going to embrace Boach and really see his leadership style day in, day out. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. Did you ever want to be a skipper? I don't know. I don't think I'd be good at it. <laughs> it's just self-evaluation here. I don't think I'd be good at it. I think you have to have uh, a lot of patience. I think that um, it's a hard job, and, and um, you know, you're know, you dealing with the media. You're dealing with the players on a daily basis. You've got your staff. you got the front office. Um, it's a tough job. It, it commands a lot of attention, a lot of time, and um, I think Boach has been able to, to navigate that masterfully over the course of his career. It's why he's a Hall of Fame manager. We were talking earlier about maybe breakout candidates. One guy that, that we brought up, Glenn Otto, you know, maybe as a bullpen arm for you. And, and there's a couple of guys that have been starters for you that might get that opportunity with you reinforcing and bringing in guys to your rotation. What's that transition like being a starter and going to the bullpen? And, and who are some guys maybe you have your eye on? 
Well, yeah, I think um, I think one of the things we tried to address this offseason was our pitching depth, and we certainly know we we knew we needed better starting pitching, uh, and we thought by making our starting pitching better, um, in turn, our bullpen would be better, and also the depth of our our pitching would be better. So. Um, you know, by adding the starting pitchers we did, um, certainly there's not going to be room for everybody in the rotation, but it doesn't mean these guys can't be very good major league pitchers, um, whether it's in the bullpen or whether they're, they're um, sliding into the rotation at some point. So, you know, ultimately I said, and I've, I've had to do both as a former player. I, um, you know, I, I know what it's like to go back and forth from the bullpen to the starting rotation. Ultimately, if you can pitch, you can pitch. And so that's the way I approach it. That's the way Mike and Boach are approaching it. And um, for all these guys, there's great opportunity. We're going to need innings, and if you can pitch and get outs, there will be a spot for you out there. What do you feel like the comfort level is with the pitch com here with uh, with the veterans? I think it's pretty comfortable. I mean, I think that last year was a great year. Um, they really kind of ran it out pretty fast. Everybody adapted. There were a couple bumps in the road with it, but um, I think it's been really beneficial for the game. I think it's actually really necessary now with the new rules, especially the pitch clock, where uh, you're on the clock. The second you get the ball back, you're on the clock, and you don't have time to stand on the mound and go through signs and sequences and shake. Uh, you, so being able to communicate that sign almost instantaneously once the pitcher catches the ball is really, really important. I think it's um, really expedited the pace of play and it's been good for the game so how 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 long into spring training can you start to identify where you want to go with some position battles like a left field or a closer a dh something like yeah, that? yeah it's, it's really tough um it's a great question I, i'm not sure uh, anybody in baseball has fully figured that out i think it just depends on the competition um there are a lot of factors that come into it who's on roster who's not on roster when guys have uh, outs in their contract um what I've told our group is let's stay away from evaluations early in camp. Let's let these guys come into camp, get into shape, really find their timing, their rhythm. Um, and, and you know, the last couple weeks of spring, let's do more evaluating then. But right now, let's let them go out and play. And those things seem to sort themselves out over the course of camp. Looks like Leiter and Rocker in pretty good shape. There, <laughs> they both guys. look great today. It was fun watching. I, um, you know, Jack came out. Fastball was lively. Um, you know, got the swing and miss on the high fastball. Kumar came in, and um, he's throwing a great sinker this spring. It's been really fun to watch. Velocity looked like 94, 95 today with heavy sink uh, and a good breaking ball. Um, they both had pretty smooth in innings, and uh, it's an exciting thing for, for our organization, for our fans in the future. Are there other young guys that are, you know, perking your ears or eyes up already? Yeah, I mean, just the way we finish games, the second half of games, uh, the last four or five innings today with the lineup we had out there with, um, you know, all these guys, Acuna, uh, uh, Duran, um, Justin Foscue, Jonathan Ornelas, Evan Carter, um, amongst others. I'm, I'm leaving a bunch out. A lot but of depth. It's a lot of depth, and that's the beauty. I think the floor of our organization has risen, the depth that we have. We've got uh, – really, really good major league players on the way, and now we don't have to accelerate their development. I mean, they can go through the proper developmental stages, and when they get to the big leagues, when they come to Arlington, they will be prepared and ready and fully developed versus having to put them in a position where uh, maybe they're not quite ready for. So it's been a lot of fun to see it. Um, you know, the last couple of days, um, we've really extended our leads uh, in, the, in the game when the backups come in. Uh, you know, the other team brings in their their second uh, their backups. We've brought in ours, and we've extended the leads, which I think it speaks to the floor of the um, the talent floor we have right now. You know, there were some that talked about maybe adding a, a middle of the lineup bat, right? Which obviously you haven't done. But you're putting up a lot of runs here in the spring so far. How do you feel right now about the offense? Well, I, I feel good. Um, I feel really good. I think that last year we scored, I think, 707 runs, which put us fifth in the American League. Uh, and really that was without having our top prospect, Josh Young, at third base. That was with losing Mitch Garver. And, um, and maybe a little bit of um, you know some moments where our top players didn't um, play as well as they expect. So... You know, I feel very good about it. We certainly, uh, you know, explored um, options in terms of adding to our offense this offseason. But I think, you know, one of the, one or two of those may come internally in terms of our, our young players. Sure. Um, I think Robbie Grossman is a, a great option. We're going to get Brad Miller back in healthy this year. Um, I like where we are offensively. I think we're dynamic. I think we've got versatility. I think we've got a lot of guys that can do some different things that complement each other. And, um, you know, I think the key is health. If these guys stay healthy, I think they'll put up runs. Well, and to add to that, how about just the shift change and how much that can help a guy like yeah. Corey Seager at the plate? You know, I think with Corey, I think Nate, I think some of these guys, some of these lefties are going to see some, some really uh, – so it's going to benefit them immensely. And um, – 
you know, I think that, again, with the speed we have, the versatility we have, the power, I, I like our offense, and I'm excited about what we can be as an offensive unit. I think our hitting coaches, Tim Hires, Seth Connor, and Donnie Ecker have done a tremendous job. And uh, this is year two with this coaching staff as well as a hitting group, and I think that we'll really see um, some leaps in terms of what we do offensively. You were a busy man this offseason. Did you get a chance to sneak in a McDonald's hash brown? <laughs> Still no hash brown. Right, I, I, I'm right, sorry right, to disappoint right. you. Yeah, okay. I thought you you'd have one waiting for me yeah. in here, but you didn't. So. <laughs> I, I needed it to be fresh. I needed it to be okay, fresh. I couldn't well. give you like a five-hour later hash brown. <laughs> nope, he's clearly disappointed, Eric. We got it. We, no, missed, we, we missed got the it. boat. We here. got to have integrity with the way we have our first McDonald's hash brown uh, be given and gifted to Chris Young. We will make Fair that enough. happen. I can assure you that. I appreciate that. Uh, now, our, our coverage is sponsored here by, uh, by Sonic. Mm, good. And I'm curious, do you have a favorite menu item at Sonic, or are you about to tell me that you haven't had Sonic in over a decade? No, no, we've, we've had we've had Sonic recently. I, th I think it was on the way back from uh, one of our uh, kids' basketball games, and um, uh, you know, I, the tater tots at Sonic are really good. Wow. So I, it's not a hash brown, but back it's a tater tots pretty close, right? It's, oh, it's very, <laughs> very, very close. Yeah. Very, very close. Daniel Lowe just told us the same thing, he didn't he? You know, they, they did. All right, yeah. I, all right. Good taste. I like that. Now, yeah. see why it is National Pancake Day as well. Do you have a favorite type of pancake? I'm pretty traditional. I like just uh, buttermilk pancakes. Um, occasionally banana pancakes, but um, but yeah. buttermilk is the way to go for me. Where is the pancake in your hierarchy of breakfast foods? Oh, it's pretty high, but I'm trying to limit the carbs right now. So yeah. I'm yeah. It's, well, you're yeah. looking like a lean, mean machine. I'm, I'm best not. Best shape I, of your life season <laughs> right now. Chris. I, yeah, I wish <laughs> the players are in the best shape of their lives. I'm not, so <laughs> I got to get in shape. <laughs> the roster's in great shape. We thank you for that. We thank you for having us out here, and we look forward. To, uh, hopefully, we'll be lucky enough to have you for a weekly conversation again. Absolutely, I look Sound forward good? to it, guys. Thanks for oh, being out here. We you. love it, and uh, looking forward to a great year of Rangers baseball. You're the best there he is. Thank Rangers. you, guys.